hey guys so um, as usual I'm gonna do um, a short video and cover some things in Rhino and today I'm gonna talk about the types of lines available in Rhino when I started this software I kind of didn't know about these and I used to do um, this like manually with a polyline or a line segment and I didn't know that there are ways there are simpler ways you can do it so I wanted to cover it up um, in this video so that you kind of know of what is available in lines in Rhino. So the first one is I'm not going to cover all of them because they're like too many but I'm going to cover the ones I feel would be useful. So the first one is like a normal line segment it's a two point segment so you just click two times and you get a line you cannot uh, like make a, a line with multiple points with this just with two lines if you want to repeat the same tool you just right click and it repeats the same tool. The next line, uh, the next type of line is like the most common one, which uh, you kind of choose when uh, it's the default line when you choose it from here. Uh, so I think everybody knows this line. This is a polyline, and you can make anything out of it, and you can even make a closed curve and make like a surface out of this. So yeah, you have the surface here. So this is a polyline. The next one is a line which kind of starts from the middle. So it's called as I think a midpoint line, a line from midpoint. So when you click and then when you drag your mouse, the line comes out from both the sides equally. So it basically draws from the midpoint, right? So you can like do something like that. Um, the next one is also an interesting, interesting type of line. So um, for that, I will need a surface right here. Now, sometimes it happens that you want like a line on top of this surface and you try to like do it from the front view and you like try to touch it and you know you like you try to go as as near as possible and then you just like draw a line but when you zoom in you notice that it's not really touching this so uh, rather than like zooming in and zooming out and trying to make it perfect you just use this tool which is line from surface normal so when you click on this it will ask you to select a surface this is my surface and then it will tell me where i want like ask me where i want the line so wherever i click it will start the line from there and then i can either enter the length of the line or click anywhere i want to and then the line will start from that surface right so there will be no space here um and this is a tool i never knew about and i used to like zoom in and make a line and Turn on O snaps and everything. Sometimes O snaps are easier and sometimes they aren't because they're kind of irritating sometimes because they're like snapping everywhere. So that time you can use this one. Um, the next one I would like to cover is the bisector line. Now the bisector line kind of is interesting. Like you sometimes have um, an angle like that and you're like mm, I'm not satisfied satisfied with it and I want something in the middle maybe a bisector or maybe you need a bisector for some other purpose then you have a tool you don't have to go and like measure the um, angle of this and then like divide it by two and then um, draw a line and rotate it on that angle that's too much that's too many steps there is a tool where you can just directly make a bisector it's this one and it is called as a bisector line and um it'll ask you where you want the bisector to start from so i want it from here so i click here then it will ask me where is the angle so the first angle is right here right so i click on this and the second angle is right here and i click on this and then you know you can see this white thing this is a perfect bisecting line of this angle and voila i have this so this is pretty useful uh, the next one is again an angled angle so it's like i drop this and then i need an angle a particular angle so sometimes what people do is that they make a line like that and then they use the rotate tool and like rotate this the way they want to now you don't have to do that you just have like an angled line so you just select the base and then you just type in like 30 degrees and press enter and you have a line at 30 degrees right here um so yeah uh the next one is really like a lifesaver for me because i was doing a furniture base which had like so many curves and i wanted legs to be perpendicular to that curve and making a perpendicular line to a curve at a certain point is kind of like really difficult so that's when i discovered this tool this is a tool which gives you a perpendicular line to a curve 
So this is like a curve and a line. That's the symbol. When you click on this, it will ask me where I want the perpendicular line to start from it. And you can see that it kind of rolls over the whole surface and gives me perpendicular points on every part of the curve. Wherever I click, I can get like a perpendicular line to this. And this is one of my favorite tools in this box um, of types of lines. Um, again, the next one is basically if you have like two curves and you want like a perpendicular line, a line which is kind of intersecting both the curves but are still perpendicular. So you use, you use this one perpendicular to two curves. So when you select the first curve and then you select the second curve, it gives you directly like a line. Okay, so the next tool I would like to cover is the tangent from curve. As its name suggests, you can draw a tangent from a curve. So um, when you select this tool, it will ask you which curve I want to draw the tangent to. I select the point and then I just like drag the line wherever I want and it gives me a line that is tangent to this curve. Uh, in the same way, um, you can make a tangent to two curves, which is this one. Um, tangent from curve and then tangent from two curves. So yeah, these are some of the lines you should know about in Rhino and I'm going to cover uh, and do more videos on um, like variations of everything like the curves types of curves in the box and maybe a little bit more of it and i would really love for you to like ask me questions and tell me what kind of videos i do i generally like to do like super short videos which are like um on a click of a button you see it and you don't get bored and you get the point of the tool and that's it so yeah thanks for watching